And so we're to our gospel reading, which is from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do they say this man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please have a seat. Last week we thought about belonging. What sort of things... uh, our criteria for us about feeling that we belong or what criteria do we have concerning others to help them have a sense of belonging, either in the bigger picture to belonging to the kingdom of heaven or in the more local specific setting, helping them to feel that they belong uh, to the local faith community. Today we're going to explore the whole important issue of identity. My thoughts go back to a, a, a song back in the 70s, I think, uh, where a phrase in it uh, had, what are you? And the response was, what are you? That whole question of identity, what are you? I find it fascinating to go to a shopping centre and watch the people going by. Have you ever done that? And all the myriad of expressions of identity that you find there. There are people with all sorts of different hues. You will see those who find their identity in getting inked. You will find those who get their identity through... uh, wearing clothes that we would have thrown years ago, but that's paid good money for them. Sorts of things about identity. Who are we? And where do we draw that sense of identity from? Because I would suggest that there's a close correlation between identity and that sense of belonging. You know, if we see ourselves differently to the group in which we are sharing, then we may feel out of place. Some people will draw their sense of identity from the group that they're a part of. I remember hearing uh, an Olympic swimmer being interviewed many years back and uh, the question was asked, "And, and what about life beyond swimming? Recognising, the interviewer recognised that you are an elite athlete now, you will grow older and you will no longer be able to do that which you're presently able to do. And the person said, there is no life beyond swimming. Their whole identity, their whole sense of being was tied up in them being a swimmer. And if they're not a swimmer, not an elite athlete, well, who am I? I'm a nothing. Identity. It affects every one of us and it affects us at stages of life because in life our identity changes 
in different settings. We think about transitions uh, from childhood to teenage years. <laughs> I can think of uh, saying to, maybe it was said to me, so I've said it to others, I'll grow up. You know, act your age. So it's that whole identity of coming to terms, oh, I'm a teenager now, oh, I'm an adult. I find it intriguing that uh, teenagers want people to treat them like an adult, but nobody does. They are teenagers after all. But then they get into their early 20s and they want to be the teenager. But they've got to be an adult. Just think of the Fonz. He had a struggle with uh, growing up, of taking on that identity. Uh, another transition, another change of identity is going from single to married. You know, I've come across people who, uh, you know, they get married, they're still behaving like they're single. And I've had couples who, in this day and age where it seems that everybody lives together before they get married, but I talk about to couples, did you go into married mode? Because there is a sense, a different sense of identity when we uh, see people move into to marriage. So in our Gospel reading, we have uh, Jesus, over the previous chapters, wanting to nurture in the disciples an understanding of who he is so that they exercise faith in him. And so we've seen uh, events in the recent weeks throughout, such as, well, uh, feed these people, feed these 15,000 people, but we haven't got the food. All we've got is a couple of fish and five loaves of bread. That'll do, says Jesus. And they feed the 5,000 and have 12 skits full of leftovers. Jesus doesn't go around saying, hey everybody, I'm the Son of God, I'm the Messiah. Quite the contrary. He goes around doing things that gets people thinking, like feeding five people with two fish and five loaves. Things like walking on the water, things like healing the blind, raising the dead, teaching in a way that they've never heard the Pharisees and the Sadducees teach. And certainly in Mark's Gospel, you have this recurring question, who is this man? Who is this man? Now, for his part, Jesus knew full well who he was. Now, right back at the very beginning of his ministry, after his baptism, we see Jesus uh, facing temptations from the devil. And what was the question the devil put to him? If you are the Son of God, do this, do that. He's trying to put out in Jesus' mind about his identity. If you are the Son of God, this. If you are the Son of God. But Jesus knew full well who he was. His identity was affirmed by none less than God himself on a number of occasions. This is my Son with whom I am well pleased. Jesus knew that he had to stay connected to his Father and so he repeatedly goes away spending time by himself connecting with the Father. So when Jesus comes to this point, and in all the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, this event is a turning point in Jesus' ministry. Because after this, we see Jesus heading for Jerusalem. His thoughts and his focus turn to Jerusalem and the event will unfold there. So when Jesus says, who do people say that I am? 
It's not to doubt about his own identity, but he's interested in hearing how he's getting through to people. Well, some say Elijah. That's how some people process who is this Jesus. Some say that you're Jeremiah. Now you need to be aware that there was an expectation of the turn of Elijah uh, in the future. There was expectation about the return of some of these prophets. Remember that Elijah had been taken up to heaven on the whirlwind. And so this was some of the expectation of the people. And then Jesus turns back to the disciples, those who have been closest to all the events that have unfolded. And he says, and what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter makes that all-important declaration. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And it's on this duration that the church is founded. Now, while we have uh, thought of that declaration as focusing on Peter, remember that Peter is the Greek word for rock, Petros. Uh, and you might uh, say that Peter was, but more than just rocky, he was the rock, the foundation. What's the foundation of the church? The foundation of the church is the declaration that Jesus is the Messiah, the one anointed by God to save his people. That's the identity of Jesus. And that's what we're called to celebrate and express in our lives day by day. We are called to declare Jesus is the Messiah, the living God. And everything else is built on. Now, which speaks louder? Actions or words? And of course, the saying goes, actually louder than words. So while it's fine to say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, Jesus is looking for that to be expressed in action. How do we express that in action? Well, it's works of faith. Remember from the other week what we said was the definition of faith? The confidence of things unseen, the certainty of things yet to come. And so here we celebrate in faith our declaration that Jesus is the Messiah, Son of the living God. And so to Peter it is declared, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And indeed we see those, you know, the symbol for Peter are keys. And indeed the, the symbol of the papacy are the crossed keys coming from this passage of scripture. Strangely, interestingly, Jesus goes to say to the disciples, and he said to this sternly, do not tell anyone that I'm the liar. He tells them sternly, do not tell anyone. Now, hang on, I thought he would want people to know that he's the Messiah. Well, in this day and age, yes. But then it was too soon. He hadn't completed his work. And he certainly didn't need the disciples running around saying, oh, Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah. Can you imagine the problems that would have unfolded with that? Jesus says, don't tell anyone. Another element of this is that he wants people to find out for themselves. And that's important in ministry. We're saying that picks up from Thomas, seeing is believing. But we need people that personal discovery 
that Jesus is the Messiah. Yes, we can say Jesus is the Messiah, but until they get to a point of self-awareness, self-discovery, that phrase will be somewhat meaningless to them. They need to discover it themselves. So what do we do about that? Do we keep silent? Certainly not. But it's a reminder to us that the way in which we go about our ministry of sharing the gospel with others is help them to come to a realisation, an acknowledgement that yes, Jesus is the Messiah. And of course, to remind us of that, we've got little phrases such as, let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Remember, Jesus didn't go around saying, hey, I'm the Messiah. But he did go around demonstrating that he's the Messiah. So may our lives be a demonstration of our confidence, our conviction that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Our actions, our words speak each day of the majesty of God, the love of God shown to us in Christ Jesus. May we express each day that Jesus is Lord and bear his love into the midst of the world that is confused about their identity. For there are many people who, in searching for their identity, have found in Christ Jesus their sense of peace, their sense of purpose is founded in their relationship with Jesus. It's at that point that all this other stuff that they've searched for in the world to give them a sense of identity falls away. For their identity is now found in nothing less than their relationship with Jesus. Because it's in Jesus that they find purpose hope and wholeness. We give thanks to God for his great love shown to us in Christ Jesus. May we in our lives shine that out day by day through the power of the Holy Spirit who has been to us. Now to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion and power, and forevermore. Amen. Let us now stand.